Hello and welcome. Uh, this is a presentation titled Resources and Best Practices for Planning Your Welcoming Week Events. Uh, my name is Lola Pack, uh, Communications Director with Welcoming America. If you have any questions at this time, uh, please use the chat feature. We will also have some time at the end of the presentation to answer as many questions as possible. As we get started, I invite you to go into the chat now and let us know where you are joining us from today. Today, we will have uh, four speakers, uh, including myself, uh, as well as my colleague, Sofia Hernandez, our Digital Engagement Manager at Welcoming America, uh, Deepika Gupta, who is a manager at the Greg Bruce Local Immigration Partnership in Canada, as well as, as, well as Sarah Colsto, Refugee Services Director at Della Lam Community Services in Kansas City, Missouri. All right. For those who are new to Welcoming Week, uh, we will spend some time sharing what Welcoming Week is. Next slide. Welcoming Week can be summarized in four points, a global narrative and movement, an opportunity to build and expand partnerships, a chance to shine a local spotlight on your communities, and a time to build bridges between people of different backgrounds in your community. Next slide. Uh, since launching in 2012, Welcoming Week has become a global campaign with over 450 events taking place in at least six countries each year. And collectively, these events demonstrate a narrative that despite what the media news says about immigration, most people in most places support newcomers in their communities. Next slide. One effective way to advance this narrative we have found is to shine a local spotlight on individual communities. Uh, as many of you may know, connecting your local narrative of welcoming to a global perspective is a powerful tool. And spotlighting your local partners and how you work together to welcome newcomers is what Welcoming Week is all about. Next slide. Welcoming Week is also an opportunity to establish new partnerships and relationships, as well as expand your current partnerships. Here are just some of the international and US uh, national uh, partners that have officially joined the Welcoming Week movement for this year, although many of them have been partners of Welcoming Week for several years. As partners, organizations commit to publicly demonstrating their support for welcoming newcomers, whether through social media, statements or resolutions or hosting an event. And for local organizers, Welcoming Week is an opportunity to engage new partners. Uh, for example, if you are an NGO uh, serving refugees in your community and you've been looking for a partner uh, in housing, um, please invite them to your Welcoming Week event or propose creating an event together. Next slide. And finally, uh, Welcoming Week is an opportunity to build bridges between people of different backgrounds in your community. Many campaigns similar to uh, Welcoming Week tend to focus on welcoming newcomers while not engaging the longtime residents of the community. Uh, we know that building a culture of welcome is a long game and requires the participation of existing neighbors in your community. And what we have seen is that Welcoming Week presents the perfect opportunity to welcome newcomers and longtime residents to come together, celebrate the community's shared values, and spark new relationships that can enhance your long-term strategy for welcoming. Next slide. And now I will discuss more about the communications resources and opportunities for Welcoming Week. Next slide. There are four main ways to enhance your communications around Welcoming Week. The first is to host an event, as we have discussed. Uh, these events can be in-person or virtual, uh, and we strongly encourage you to work with local partners to create your event together. 
If you are an NGO, you can also sign up to be an official partner of Welcoming Week. This provides enhanced visibility and marketing for your organization's work on official Welcoming Week communications, such as our email campaigns and social media. You can also share your stories of welcome through social media or in traditional media. Send a pitch to your local news media to cover your events or invite them to be part of uh, them in some way. Uh, for instance, having a panel of discussion on immigration where a local reporter could be a moderator. Uh, many organizations also use Welcoming Week uh, to launch a social media campaign to get community members, particularly uh, younger people, uh, engaged in your community's welcoming work uh, year round. And so we would just ask to make sure you center your stories and messaging around the core talking points that we have available in the toolkit, which my colleague Sophia will, will discuss further in a little bit. Next slide. Uh, so to help unify the global messaging of Welcoming Week, we have uh, provided suggested themes for each day of Welcoming Week. Uh, this year, there is no overall theme uh, for Welcoming Week. And as I discuss the daily themes, um, our moderators will go through the next few slides slowly to ensure that everyone can view the text uh, in their language. Um, Daily themes are suggested ideas for you to host uh, your welcoming uh, week events or campaigns. So for example, on Saturday, the 9th of September, you can focus your events around civic engagement by conducting a voter registration uh, campaign. Um, or on the 11th of September, the theme, which is e economic development, uh, you can use this day to highlight the local immigrant businesses or demonstrate how migration has impacted uh, the local economy. Um, and I just want to say here that you are not required to cover these daily themes at all. Uh, Welcoming Week is all about uplifting your local community in your local context. Uh, so feel free to use or not use these themes. And you can find more examples of uh, using these themes um, in our toolkit. Um, as well as the next uh, few slides. So here we have uh, some images of, um, with examples of international organizations that have leveraged the daily themes in their social media uh, campaigns. Uh, for example, you can see um, the organization World Education Services uh, spotlighting the equitable access uh, theme uh, in their messaging by uh, talking about some other programs that they do uh, to increase access for immigrants in their communities to the workplace. Um, in the middle, you have uh, an organization um, posting in French um, about uh, how they work with young people. And to the far right, you can see the um, organization Welcoming Australia uh, talking about or show showcasing the events that they um, did for Welcoming Week uh, last year. So there are many ways uh, to use the themes. You also do not have to use the themes at all. Uh, and it's all about just tailoring your messaging and your events for Welcoming Week around what is most needed uh, in your community. And so hopefully we can provide some resources to help you with that. And with that, I will now pass it on to my colleague, Sofia Hernandez. Next slide. Thanks, Lola. Hi, everyone. Welcome. I'm happy to have you all here. I'm going to be discussing the website, the toolkit, as well as some other features on the website that are gonna be available to you. Um, so before starting, if you've visited our website so far at welcomingweek.org, um, there will be a few features added within the coming days. So we'll discuss the event map that's not available until the end of this month. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, the website is also available in English, German, Spanish, French, and Italian. 
Um, you can access those translations by going to the right hand side of your screen, clicking on the translate toggle button and selecting whichever language you would like to access the site in. Um, there's also a call to sign up for welcoming week updates. Uh, I highly recommend signing up for our updates. We'll be sending out newsletters through email on different um, tools, resources, and information that you can use as you are planning your welcoming week event. Next slide, please. So the welcoming week toolkit can be um, segmented into three different areas. So we have our communications tools, logos and visual assets, as well as an event planning guide. And we can go to the next slide. So on the website, while you're in the toolkit section, um, you can click on these icons to access the different areas of the toolkit. So in communications tools, um, we've provided some core talking points that Lola touched on earlier. You can use these points in any of your um, communications. It's basically just a starting point for you to use in um, you know, sending out the messaging of welcoming week. With that, we also have a suggested communications timeline that starts from one month prior to your event all the way until after welcoming week, as well as some social media tips. So our key hashtag this year is welcoming week 2023. If you're posting online, please use that hashtag. We'd love to see what everyone is um, doing around welcoming week, whether it's hosting an event, um, supporting the cause or um, just sharing stories online. We also recommend tagging us in any of your posts regarding Welcoming Week at Welcoming USA on Twitter and Instagram and at Welcoming America on Facebook. Lastly, under the communications tools, we have a press release template for you to fill out um, for, with your community's information, um, it's just a template, so whatever way it makes sense for you to use, that's available. In logos and visual assets, we have Welcoming Week logos available in um, English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. We also have different variations of those logos, so please feel free to use those on any of your um, communications collateral. Um, also, be sure to check out our branding guidelines, so that way we're all using the logo consistently. We also have I'm a welcomer signs that have been available in the past. These signs are um, available in multiple languages, more than just the five languages we've listed. Um, in case you need to add a different language to these signs, there is an editable Canva graphic that you can use to edit those signs. Lastly, under logos and visual assets, we have social media templates, which are available in English, French, German, Italian, and Spanish. Um, each of these templates has designs for each of the daily themes. Um, again, you don't have to use these. We just wanted a good starting point for everyone to have um, while you're coming up with some of your social media messaging. Um, these templates are also formatted for different social media platforms, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Now the last piece, the event planning guide, um, we have a brief um, kind of guide on how to plan an event starting from the ideation phase to the implementation phase all the way to um, after welcoming week. So please feel free to check that out. And if you still need some more inspiration on developing an event for the week, we have examples from nonprofits, um, local governments, as well as international examples as well. So those are all available. And then there is a proclamation or resolution sample that you can use to have Welcoming Week proclaimed in your community. So that is um, an overview of the Welcoming Week toolkit. So we can go on to the next slide. If you have any questions about the toolkit or the website, please feel free to reach out to communications at welcomingamerica.org. We try to be very responsive to everyone's messages. So 
that is available to you. So if you need to reach out, please feel free to do so. Next slide. So the events map feature will be available on the website in the coming days. Um, this is basically a map that includes all of the welcoming week events that our um, participants have chose to add to the map. The way you can add your event is by clicking that submit event button and you'll be prompted to a form that's also on our website. You'll fill out the form with your event name, the host organization, as well as other relevant information. And once you submit that form, your event will populate on the event listing below the map. And if you need to upload multiple events at one time, um, we'll have some instructions or guidelines on how to do that. But basically that process will include downloading an Excel sheet, filling that sheet out with your events information, and then sending that sheet to the communications at welcomingamerica.org email address. We can go to the next slide. And with that, I will pass it back on to Lola. Thanks, Sophia. Uh, now we are going to hear from our partner organizations uh, and they will share more in-depth examples of Welcoming Week events and ideas, uh, beginning with Deepika Gupta, who is the manager of the Gray Bruce Local Immigration Partnership in Canada. Thank you, Lola. Uh, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity to present uh, what we have been doing in Gray and Bruce counties. And before I just dive in my presentation, I would like to let audiences know what this Gray Bruce Local Immigration Partnership is. Uh, it is a fully funded federal program by Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada that was initiated in partnership with Economic Development Department of both Gray and Bruce counties in 2020. Uh, all across Canada, we have 89 local immigration partnerships based in municipalities with community organizations and educational institute. We basically work at the local level, bringing newcomer service providers and stakeholders together to collaborate to strengthen the programming and services and services building um, the strategies to build welcoming and inclusive communities. We do not work directly with newcomers, but rather work with various stakeholders to ensure that they have knowledge, awareness, and resources to support newcomers. And just uh, the next slide, please. So describing our welcoming week event, this is one of the event which are very proud of uh, developing a campaign called Universal Gesture Campaign. But what happened that Welcoming Week 2022 made, an, made a great impact across Great Bruce counties. Just based on our role, we planned our uh, week in collaboration with dozens of community partners. <clears throat> uh, the, the Welcoming Week last year was special as it was 10th anniversary of Welcoming Week, what is now a global event, and our Grey Bruce second year participating regionally to recognize and celebrate the people, places, and values. Uh, it took place online and in person all across Grey Bruce from 19 to 18 September throughout the region's public libraries because we identified through our community uh, settlement organizations that those are the places where new immigrants go when they reach to, when they come to or migrate to any, any community. Uh, public library, libraries set up a different display of books in their libraries. Then museums had a full day full week pass for free passes for not just new immigrants, but for long-term residents as well. We arranged a webinar with Business Enterprise Center of both counties to have immigrants know how, if they want to start their businesses, what requirements, what support, what resources are available. We also understood that police services play a major role in bridging that gap where when any new immigrant come to a, 
uh, an area they they come from different cultural background and different understanding and relationship with police services so we tried to had a newcomer session during that week and also a lot of <clears throat> grassroots organizations were engaged along with newcomer and long time resident and recognizing this importance of welcoming week both wardens from brain bruce counties appreciated the celebrations so the main uh, main um, as one of our mandate is to conduct research about newcomers and community needs we looked at community experiences of discrimination and conducted a survey with uh, about experiences of discriminations and we are primarily rural local immigration partnership with similar context so we gray bruce guelph wellington and huron lip met to discuss on how to approach uh, this challenge in our community and we identified that we needed to create a public information campaign to address discrimination so we decided we wanted to focus on a positive message instead of negative messaging that was targeted at our residents primarily rural and small town residents we also focused on developing a radio print and digital media advertising campaign Uh, we put out a request for proposal to create a marketing collateral to promote messages of our aspirations to be welcoming communities for our racially and ethnically not so diverse uh, resident and visitors uh, we are hoping to encourage we were hoping that time to encourage our <clears throat> resident to take tangible actions and share welcoming strategies to make this campaign a success and this campaign was called out to be a universal gesture campaign as a way of making pe people feel welcome in the community no matter what their background and identified how that gestures could contribute to make more positive environment so the four posters were created with different messages the next slide please yeah <clears throat> the first read a wave hello can go a long way it takes all of us to build a feeling of community everyone deserve to be included together let's welcome every new neighbor and the same uh, a smile a simple conversation uh, can have a big impact and the third one the blue in the blue is my favorite we now have t-shirts and all the swags with this a smile is the same in every language Uh, and again it repeats the message of uh, from the previous poster that together let's welcome every new neighbor and also friendship starts with a few kind word which was a hit in schools because we have different stakeholders uh, school boards are represented in there and these were all just taken so much forward by school boards and now it's in every school displaying these um, these images so these print ads were also developed for social media uh, as posters and stickers we had radio campaign going on all across gray bruce huron perth it's a long long this like a coverage of the uh, our counties we also had a website uh, called welcomingweek.ca that bill that identify additional act of welcoming provide data on the number of newcomers highlight positive experiences of newcomers um, and that had made them feel welcome in three community in all three immigration partnerships areas uh, with this uh, with its enduring messages of inclusivity the campaign content hold timeless value and can be widely utilized and we call it as evergreen campaign although we started it that time in welcoming week gulf wellington and huron launched it that time we also used this campaign in march 2023 uh, as our comprehensive campaign delivered exceptional outcomes capturing more than close to 800000 impressions across digital diverse digital channels and the main outcomes were that we have garden 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 garnered sorry a lot of media attention a uh, conversation starting tool at public events and also strengthened engagement from stakeholders the other point i just want to touch base quickly on why we celebrate welcome week is uh, our communities they are 
So every community is different and it's important to understand the level of preparedness for welcoming new immigrants in different community. And the definition of welcoming is different for everybody uh, in alignment of what characteristics we have as welcoming characters of our community. And it is only possible if we start celebrating and having those conversations, those difficult conversations of immigrant inclusion and belonging and creating those brave spaces. And our communities in Great Bruce have now started to realize the importance of being welcoming. Uh, not that they were not welcoming, but keep saying it out loud. And now we also recognize that immigration will continue to play a key important role in the economic future of Grand Bruce counties. Just the last advice on, uh, I would like to give all other, not I'm expert, but just we were not expecting so big in our first attempt. We just started having a conversation with partners and there is a powerful, uh, you know, power in, in collaboration. And it will certainly have a ripple effect and feeling that people will feel that they belong to a community. And that feeling in community, bringing in community with, is a journey. So yeah, with that, there is my contact information. Thank you for listening. And if you want to know more about this campaign, we do have all social media, social asset, social media handles and asset, digital asset, which we can share. Uh, please reach out for that. Thank you. Thanks so much, Deepika. Now um, we'll hear from uh, Sarah Colsto, uh, the Refugee Services Director at Della Lamb Community Services in Kansas City, Missouri. Thank you, Lola. Um, it's great to be here with you all today. I was going to say good morning, but I don't think it's morning everywhere. So I'm not going to say good morning. I'm just going to say good day. Um, it's great to be part of this panel and, and this discussion. So as you already heard, my name is Sarah. I work at Della Lamb Community Services as the um, Refugee Services Director. Um, and we are located in Kansas City, Missouri. We're one of three local resettlement agencies working in this area. So it's a privilege to be here today. And I'm gonna talk briefly about um, an event that we held last year called the Interfaith Refugee Forum. Um, and really one of the ways we looked at this event was how can we engage additional partners in this work? Um, just to give you a little bit of background in kind of my story at Della Lamb, I, I'm the recent director. I've recently been promoted to director, but I started here as the community sponsorship coordinator. And one of my main roles in that job was to design and implement a co-sponsorship program. So I want to, before I kind of get going into our event, I want to kind of explain co-sponsorship so that you have an understanding of kind of the, the partnerships that we were looking to recruit into for this um, during this event. So co-sponsorship is a, is a volunteer model where groups of individuals from anywhere from 10 to 15 people, even 20, they come together and they are mobilized to um, come around a family and support a newly arrived refugee family for six months from the date of arrival. So co-sponsorship is by far our most involved level of volunteer commitment. Um, they sign a memorandum of memorandum of understanding with our organization and they agree to partner with us to provide core services to the refugee family. Um, they also raise a significant financial donation for the family and provide in-kind donation. So when we were thinking about this event, we were thinking about um, how can we get the word out about these additional opportunities for people to partner with us and, and basically just form a more welcoming community here in the Kansas City area. So we were really looking at this event to, to get the word about out about that. Um, so we really came at it with, with three goals. Um, we were looking to educate the people that we brought in. Um, this was a two hour event. So, which I think was great. I think it was the perfect amount of time. It's not too intimidating for people to sign up for two hours on a Saturday morning and it kept the pace moving. So it was a two hour event and we probably had about 35 to 40 people in attendance, which in my mind is a great number of people to have, you know, a panel discussion with, it leaves room for conversation. And so we started the day with, with education. That was one of our goals for the, for the, um, for the event. We also wanted to focus on expanding, um, 
kind of expanding our, our volunteer base. And we also wanted to then empower those people. So we talked about education, expansion and empowerment. And I wanna talk a little bit more in depth about what that looks like at this specific event. So I view any opportunity to get up in front of people as an opportunity to educate people, right? So we invited people to this um, into this conversation that some were already partnered with us, and some were prospective partners. So people that we wanted to be more invested in this conversation and in this work with us. So we really focused on educating, you know, there's always room to continue this conversation of, you know, what is what what is currently happening in the refugee sphere? Um, things are constantly changing. How can we continue to keep our current partners informed about where things are at? And then as far as education, we also brought in other community partners to share their experience with um, our attendees. So we didn't just want this to be, you know, the Della Lamb show. What other partners in this community could we invite in to share their experiences and, and their services and their provision and, and what they do as well? So we invited two other nonprofits to be part of the conversation. So there were multiple voices um, kind of educating our, our, our group on, you know, what was happening globally, but also how that impacted, you know, kind of this local, um, local community of, of refugees and people that serve and support them. So, um, we really, it was just great to have other voices there at the table as a panel discussion, people were able to ask questions and really learn more about, you know, how they could get involved in becoming um, and making Kansas City a more welcoming place. Um, and expand is up there now. That's the other thing we wanted to do is expand our volunteer base. So when we thought about who to invite to this, you know, I think just historically, um, faith communities have been um, major contributors in the volunteer sphere, specifically toward, you know, in welcoming refugees. So we wanted to invite, you know, current partners that we utilized, as well as people that were like, not super invested yet, but we wanted to give them an opportunity. So um, we wanted to expand that volunteer base and, and grow it, you know, and recruit other people who would be interested in partnering with us. Um, one thing that was, I thought super effective and super helpful was, we wanted prospective partners to hear from people who were already doing the work. So we invited our current volunteers to speak, like what has your experience been like working with this population? What has your experience been like working as a co-sponsor with Della Lamb? We allowed them to you know, do some of the recruitment for us. And I think it's, really powerful when you're trying to recruit and cultivate new volunteers to have that firsthand experience from people who have already done it. So we invited our, our current volunteers to speak um, to the group as well. And I think that was a really effective way of, of gaining interest from people who were not yet invested. Um, and really, you know, just kind of shows that there's more to it than just this one organization. We really want to show that welcoming in the broader sense involves involves everybody to to take part in it so i think that was a really beautiful way to do that and then finally you know we've we've educated we've brought other people into the conversation now we wanted to give opportunities for these people to be empowered to step into this work um, and as I mentioned, when I first started speaking, you know, a big focus is recruit was recruiting for co-sponsorship. We believe partnering new arrivals with members of the community is a really powerful way to offer additional advocacy for the family, um, additional networking opportunities for the family, something that we as a resettlement agency with limited resources just can't provide. So we were eager to kind of expand that network and grow co-sponsorship. Um, and also, I mean, you all are probably aware of it, but when refugees fall out of the news, volunteers tend to fall away as well. You know, during the, the Afghan crisis, we had people banging down our door to volunteer, but once the news kind of dries up, we have our work cut out for us to say, hey, 
refugees are still here. There's still an opportunity for you to get involved, um, but we have to be much more intentional about how we pursue those. So we really wanted to get the word out about co-sponsorship. So that was a big push for us, but it's also a pretty intimidating first step, right? So if you're asking people to partner with you, hey, uh, we have this opportunity. It's a six month commitment. It's $3,000 in a donation. Like that can sound really overwhelming and you have to organize your own group of people, right? So we, we didn't want to just present like, here's one opportunity to get involved. We wanted to present additional on-ramps for people who would be able to step in and say, well, maybe I can't do a full on co-sponsorship, but maybe I can set up a home for a refugee family. You know, maybe it's this kind of, one and done experience that will get their foot in the door and hopefully give them a taste for, you know, and a desire to be more, more involved. So um, I think it's important when, you know, recruiting volunteers, I actually like to use the word cultivating volunteers because I think recruitment sounds maybe a little bit like, hey, we just need you for this work. Cultivation is to me more of an investment um, because they really are partners with us, but it was important for us to present, you know, different ways for them to engage than just that one, that one way. So, um, I, it was an effective event. I, um, you know, we didn't get a ton of new teams, but we did get a few. And I think, um, we couldn't have asked for more with the group that we had. And so we're excited to kind of tweak uh, a similar event this year. It's going to look a little bit different, but I think it was a great, um, kind of first step for us into this welcoming and um, yeah, excited to do it again. So thank you very much. Thanks so much, Sarah. Uh, so you can find uh, more examples of refugee co-sponsorship and other events hosted by nonprofits, local governments and other types of organizations uh, on our website at uh, welcomingweek.org. Uh, and so uh, now we will uh, take questions uh, from the attendees. Uh, please add them into the chat using the uh, Q&A function. Uh, unfortunately, we will only be able to answer uh, live questions in English. Uh, however, if you submit a question in another language, our moderators will take a note and make sure to follow up with you by email uh, with a written response. Uh, and so as you uh, type in your questions, uh, we will begin responding to questions that were submitted prior uh, to this webinar. So one of the questions that we received asked, uh, if you're, we're looking for tips on engaging schools. Uh, timing has been difficult since the summer uh, vacation is during the planning period for the event. Uh, that's a great uh, that's a great question, and we understand, especially for those who are based in the United States and have uh, schools have very long summer breaks, um, and then you know in September is the beginning of also the school year. Um, so what we would suggest here is uh, to find a local library partner, perhaps who can work with you on curating a list of books uh, around welcoming values for students. Um, and if your school is actually beginning during welcoming week, uh, then I think that is a perfect opportunity to incorporate the talking points uh, into the first week of activities that are already happening uh, at school. So you know, teachers or school leaders can give uh, welcoming statements or proclamations um, there can be a shared artwork uh, being done and also just reconfiguring classroom spaces uh, so that you can engage uh, all different groups of uh, students uh, and teachers and faculty um, at the school. Um, let's see. Another question that we received uh, was around, uh, do you have suggestions on how to get city officials uh, on board with the event uh, to support and to attend uh, the event. Um, so when we asked our team about this question, uh, sort of the response was that consistent engagement with city officials is key. And so we would suggest inviting them to attend and support while offering a speaking opportunity. Um, they can provide remarks. Usually city officials are very open to doing this. Um, and then follow up afterwards um, and thanking them and offering support in an area uh, of their work for the community. So, you know, if uh, the mayor is looking for volunteers for another type of initiative, or seeking input on one of their internal committees, um, you can also offer your help there. And that begins to build that relationship uh, with um, the, your city officials. Um, 
if you are going to suggest that they issue a welcoming uh, proclamation or a resolution, uh, which many cities and counties do annually around the world, and we have we have a template for this uh, in our welcoming week uh, toolkit. So you can go to the website and download a template, um, and you can kind of fill in some of the local language there and have your uh, local official read it out loud and even live stream it on Facebook, and that way you can reach uh, more people in that way. Okay, so we have a live question in the chat. Um, does anyone have advice? Sorry, uh, can you all hear me? Uh oh. Now, now we can. I couldn't hear you for a second, Lola. Okay, sorry. All right, my apologies about that. Um, so uh, I was asking um, Sophia on our team uh, if you happen to know. Oh, thank you. Um, about anything more about the uh, example of simple as water that was on our website? I, I don't know if I have an answer to that right now, um, but I can definitely follow up with Anthony and he can include in his follow-up email. Yeah, thank you, Sophia. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, so we'll follow up in our roundup email, which all attendees, uh, if you registered for this event, you will receive a follow-up email after this webinar. Um, with a link to watch the recording uh, in the in the appropriate language, um, and it'll, it will also include additional links for those resources. And actually, on that note, uh, I did want to mention that if you are um, based in another country, um, some of our welcoming international alliance partners uh, also issue toolkits that are more contextualized uh, to that country. And we will have more of those links available um, in the follow-up email as well as on the Welcoming Week website as time goes on. But uh, particularly if you are based in either Australia or New Zealand, um, as well as Mexico, um, we should have some of those toolkits and other resources in country uh, available to you. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Well, if you have uh, any other questions about uh, Welcoming Week or the resources on our website or anything in that was discussed in this webinar, um, you may please send, you can send a follow-up email to communications at welcomingamerica.org. Uh, if you, you can also submit those questions in another language uh, and we will uh, make sure that you also receive a response uh, in your language um, as well. This recording will also be available on YouTube uh, in the coming days um, in the uh, individual languages. Um, and again, you'll receive a follow-up email um, from our event coordinators uh, once uh, all of that is available. Um, but we really appreciate you all joining us. Um, I just wanna give a hand to our interpreters on the line who have been working throughout the past hour and a half uh, to translate this webinar into the multiple languages. So thank you all and um, good luck on your Welcoming Week events. Uh, Welcoming America is available as a resource to you all uh, for ideas uh, to help guide your event planning as well as just any general questions you have about engaging your community around Welcoming Week. Um, and we are very thankful and uh, just so thrilled to see um, so many different partners and uh, members on, on this call. Uh, and hope to, and we're just so excited to see what you all do for, for Welcoming Week this year. Thank you. And have a great day.